Hi everybody, it's Michael here with a follow-up to my earlier three-part video review of the Maker Farm 8-inch Prusa i3 RepRap 3D printer. And I uh, had this printer built for about a month and a half or so, and uh, this video is really kind of uh, just a description of my lessons learned, things that I found that worked really well, things that I found maybe didn't work so well, uh, and just uh, some general impressions from having operated this for a little while. Uh, the first thing that I noticed, and I'm glad I did this, uh, is I actually, uh, as much as people have said that printing with PLA is easier and more forgiving of mistakes, I actually found ABS to be uh, an easier material to print with right off the bat, partly because it doesn't require really any um, uh, any cooling. Uh, for, if you have really tall prints or uh, parts with really thin walls, you may need to take some steps to keep the print warm, otherwise you'll get layer separation. And I have experienced a little bit of that. Uh, but in general, if you're printing uh, low-rise, fairly thick parts, the, the ABS does seem to flow really uh, quite a bit more easily, I think. Uh, the next thing I would suggest is once you get your printer built and you've got uh, a few test prints under your belt and you've got some calibration objects and you're pretty confident that your printer is set up correctly, I would recommend making a uh, set of any printed parts that your printer may have come with. In particular, I would suggest uh, creating a whole new set of extruder parts uh, because those do tend to break some. You'll notice that uh, the idler right here is a different color than the rest of the extruder body and you guessed it, that is because that part did break and I was very glad that I had that spare set right on hand so I could just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and grab another idler, bolt it on, and get right back to where I was going. I don't think I lost more than about 10 or 15 minutes on that process. Now, if I'd had to order one and wait for it to arrive or find someone else with a printer who could print it for me, that would have taken quite a bit more time. Uh, so I was very happy that I had that handy. So, uh, yeah, so I would suggest starting with uh, the ABS and then printing a set of extruder parts. Uh, the next thing uh, that I did, because it was very important to me to uh, be able to print both in ABS and PLA, uh, right off the bat I had a lot of trouble printing with PLA. Uh, what happened, and I think this is a fairly common problem with, uh, with PLA filament, is some of the heat from the nozzle uh, I think had migrated a little further up the filament and was causing the filament to expand in the top part of the J head and that caused the filament to jam and what I noticed uh, when I was printing is I'd look down and I'd see that it, the head was moving around like it's supposed to except that there was no extrusion and it was you know, clearly had stopped several layers beforehand because it was just moving around over air and then when I uh, peeled the uh, idler back and looked inside I saw that the hob bolt had in fact just cut a big gouge in the side of the filament and there was a uh, little you know powdered crushed bits of PLA all over everything and that uh, required a little bit of cleanup and that was way more work than I was hoping to do in order to get a print. Uh, my solution to that and again, this is a pretty well documented solution to a pretty well documented problem, is I went ahead and printed a fan mount and a fan shroud in ABS and attached this 40 millimeter fan, and that is blowing right across the top of the J-head. And that's keeping me, there are some cooling fins in the J-head right there, and I'm just blowing some air across those with this fan, and that has been keeping the, uh, the problem just uh, completely in check. I haven't had a single problem with extrusion of PLA since I did that. Uh, it is also uh, occasionally something that people do where they will uh, blow some air onto the filament as it's being extruded and I have not found that to be necessary. I haven't had any problems with, uh, with printing once I got the top part of the nozzle cooled off. Uh, as you can see this PLA is going just fine. Uh, the other thing that I did, uh, and this was sort of a happy mistake actually, was and in one of my videos I talked about uh, buying a, a second glass sheet to use as a print bed and uh, that has turned out to actually be a very useful thing to do. Um, what my uh, technique has been if I'm doing a lot of printing, uh, one print after another, is uh, I will go ahead and just when the print's finished take these clips off and I have left the handles on the clips which is not sort of the standard recommended practice uh, but with those clips off I can just slide that bed off and set it aside to cool and uh, the bed cooling I found to be the most effective way to get the to get parts off of the, the heated bed. You can actually hear them cracking loose as that bed cools and it cools a lot more quickly if it's uh, set aside onto a different surface. Uh, the other thing I can then do is take my, my second sheet, slide it right on where the first one was, clip it on and then get right back to printing and then of course once I peel the parts off the first sheet I can clean that at my leisure and get it all ready to go when the when the next print is finished. Uh, the other thing that I found is uh, out of the box the uh, 
uh, the firmware that came preloaded on um, uh, on the ramps board, uh, which was Marlin, which I think is great, uh, was pretty close as far as extruder calibration goes. It was uh, just a little bit, a little bit off. And there is a pretty well documented method for uh, doing a little bit of math and measuring uh, how much your how much uh, filament actually gets extruded versus what you've asked for in a pronter face. Uh, there's another method though that I just learned about that that seems to work very well, which is uh, you can start off by just monitoring how your print is looking. And if it looks like it's getting a little bit blobby, or the uh, nozzle is pushing through the previous layer, or you're pushing little blobs of uh, melted plastic around the top of the print, you can use this knob right here and just dial down the flow rate um, from your extruder. And I guess it's out of the shop, but up on the LCD control, there is a knob that uh, defaults to a flow rate. And I've got it turned down to about 98% right now, and I'm getting a pretty good print with that. So you can kind of adjust it on the fly that way. And then if the print starts to look bad, you can, you can change it around. Um, the other thing that I have found uh, is a, uh, for me it's just been a daily habit whenever, I, whenever I'm getting ready to start printing for the day, uh, what I will do is make sure that the x-axis is level. And because we've got uh, two threaded rods, one on either side of the x-axis, I think those tend to turn at just slightly different rates and it does tend to wander a little bit out of adjustment. So what I'll do uh, at the beginning of a print session is go ahead and home the x-axis and then uh, and get back in this corner right here, home X and home Z, so that the uh, print head will get down right to where its, its starting point is gonna be on the surface. And then I will just use a set of automotive feeler gauges right here. And the one I use uh, mostly for that is a, this one right here, which is a three one thousandths of an inch or a point, uh, zero seven six millimeter feeler gauge. And I will just slide that under the nozzle and uh, ideally, it'll slide under it without having to be, without taking any force, but it will generate a little bit of drag as you're moving it around. You kind of feel it dragging. And once that, uh, if it's if it's too high, I will adjust the uh, Z end stop right here with this uh, with a screwdriver, and make whatever adjustments I need to do until I get that right where I want it. And then what I'll do is raise it up about a centimeter, and then go to the X max, which would be this section right over here, this corner. And then I'll go ahead and home the Z axis again and hopefully I've got the same uh, amount of clearance on both sides. And if I don't have the same amount of clearance, what I will do is just go ahead and twist this rod right here, which is going to which is sitting on a nut that's right in here. And I'm, I can just adjust the height back and forth that way. Then go back to the uh, uh, X and Z home, make sure I've still got it there. And, and a couple of back and forths usually is about all it takes until the thing is just dead on. So that's again been pretty much my uh, um, some of my daily maintenance on that. Uh, so that right there is about uh, what I've learned on, uh, oh, no, one other thing that, uh, that I have found to be a very good tip, and this is something that Colin recommends in the, uh, in the instruction videos for, uh, for building this printer, and I think it's a great tip. Uh, you'll notice I am printing PLA currently on a heated bed, it's at 60 degrees, and uh, the, the surface is just treated with extra hold hairspray. I'm sorry, extra super hold hairspray. Uh, and I have found that that uh, works great. I have actually not had to use blue painter's tape or uh, Kapton tape, both of which are quite a bit more expensive than just buying a, uh, a can of hairspray, which cost me, I think, less than $3, and I can get it at the drugstore across the street if I need to. Uh, that has worked very well. The only uh, con concerns or issues I found with that is that, and I, I believe this has to do with the bed temperature, but if I'm printing with ABS, which uses a much higher bed temperature, I want to use a very thin, just one coat of hairspray. And I think what happens is that if the uh, if the hairspray is too thick, I think some of it liquefies, and then it uh, I get bad adhesion. Now, interestingly, with the cooler bed temperature that I use for PLA, which is about 60 degrees centigrade, uh, if I have too thin a coat, then I start to lose adhesion. So in that case, I'll use about two or three coats and make sure I have very good coverage, and then it's uh, not a problem whatsoever. In both cases, uh, as soon as I pull the glass off the bed and set it aside to cool, the parts just jump loose after a couple of minutes. So, so it's, uh, I think, a great method for, for getting prints to adhere to the, to the heated bed is just to use the hairspray. It works fantastically. So that right there is uh, pretty much what I've uh, what I've learned in the first six weeks or so. I'd say uh, my advice would be start with ABS. Uh, make sure you've got a spare set of any printed parts. 
Uh, if you're going to print PLA, uh, you may, you know, other people I'm told have not had the problem that I did. Uh, for me, uh, printing the fan and getting, or, excuse me, the fan mount in the shroud and getting the fan blowing across the top of the J head was all I needed. I haven't had any problems with PLA since then. Uh, monitor and adjust your, your flow rate uh, with the knob on your LCD controller. Uh, keep a spare uh, glass uh, print bed around and then use hairspray for adhesion. Those are the big things that I've learned. I've had great luck with those and uh, that's pretty much what my experience has been in the first six weeks or so of operating this. Now if you guys have anything to add or any questions or especially if you think that I, I'm going down a bad path I'd love to hear from it before the disaster happens. Uh, but in any case uh, that's what I got and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.